What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. So today we're talking about 70 to 200 f 2.8 lenses. More specifically, we're talking about two. We're talking about the new RF 70 to 200 f 2.8. And we're talking about the old EF 70 to 200 2.8. This is the IS Mark One. So, why are we talking about those two lenses? Well, we want to talk about the new Canon R6. And of course, for a lot of people, the 70 to 200 choice for this lens would be the RF mount, the RF 70 to 200 f2.8, because those two together are a deadly combination when it comes to sports. But a lot of people, of course, don't have the new RF mount model. They will have, like myself, some of the older EF lenses. So I, for example, have the 70 to 200 IS Mark I, the f2.8. And a lot of people are interested in how this lens performs when it's used on the Canon R6, because of course, in order to make an EF lens work on the R6, you need the RF to EF adapter. And you get a lot of questions around the performance using this adapter and perhaps even more importantly how does it compare with the RF model. Now I've been using the EF lens on the Canon R6 for quite some time and, and spoiler alert I think it works really really well but I wanted to get into a little bit more detail and I wanted to see how well it compares to the RF model so I managed to get hold of one of these so that we could do some direct comparisons and last night I went down to the Surrey Scorchers against Manchester Giants basketball game and I took some photos using both lenses with my Canon R6 so that we could compare and see how well does the new RF model perform compared to the older EF lens? Now first of all let's just look at the physical differences. So first of all if you get the old EF lens without the adapter initially that is how tall it is okay and if we get the RF mount next to it you can see there is a fair difference in size. Now of course the RF lens has the old kind of push-pull zoom so if you extend it out then actually it becomes slightly longer so maybe the smaller size of it is a little bit misleading but I suppose where does the lens size really count I guess it's when it's in your camera bag and in that situation it takes up less room the other thing that's crazy to think about with the size is when you mount this on to the Canon R6 that's then how big it is. Now, that is a really small little setup. I mean, it sits nicely in the palm of your hand. It is crazy to think that that little setup there would actually be a really decent professional sports photography setup. When you think about the older equivalent would be the Canon 1DX with the 70 to 200 on it. I mean, look at the difference in the size of these things. That one nice and easy in the palm of your hand. You can hold that in your palm of your hand, but boy, it is heavy. Now, of course, there's no grip on this and with the grip, it would be a little bit bigger. But even then, even when you get a grip on that Canon R6, it is nothing like the size of that 1DX. So although we're moving a bit more onto the camera as away from the lens, it is crazy that with that lens there, that is a really, capable professional sports setup compared to the size of what we've been dealing with. Okay, anyway, just for now, let's just take the 1DX out of the equation because that's a whole different comparison. Today, we are worried about the Canon R6. Now, just keeping with the size difference for a minute, of course, the thing to remember when you're using this lens on the R6, you do need the adapter. So when you add the adapter on there, you're then talking even more size. If we get the RF lens directly onto the camera, there we go, that's that on there, and it takes up that much room. If we put the EF lens with the adapter on there, we are then suddenly turning that into a much bigger piece of kit. That's turning into almost like a 300 mil size lens on there. That That is crazy. And that is a hefty old piece of kit. It is much, much bigger. But those of us who've been used to using 1DXs with these kinds of lenses, actually, that's nothing too much to worry about at all. We could carry that around nice and easy, shoot a game, no problems at all. 
So just to touch on a couple of specifics for you guys, the adapter that I'm using is the regular mount adapter for EF to RF. It's not the one that has the control ring or anything like that on there. Uh, it is the more basic model. So quickly going to touch on performance before I start talking about photos, because one of the big talking points around this adapter is whether or not using an older EF lens and this adapter, you can still achieve the same level of frames per second. Now with the mechanical shutter, with the RF mount lens, you can achieve 12 frames per second. That's what Canon quote. And I've done a couple of tests and I would say, yes, you can achieve 12 frames per second. Now, officially, I believe that with the older EF lens and the mount, it is suggested that you will actually only get about seven frames per second using the mechanical shutter on the R6. I would say from my own tests, it's actually a little bit faster. I've actually, and, and when I say a test, I'm not talking too scientific. I've sat there and I've fired it off and I've timed it a little bit with a stopwatch. I actually would say I'm achieving about nine frames per second with this and actually nine frames per second, 12 frames per second. F for me, that is adequate for sports. That's going to do the job. Of course, 12 frames per second is better, but nine frames per second isn't going to kill me. So we took both of these lenses down to the basketball game last night. And what I did, literally, I spent some time of the game shooting with this setup, with the EF lens and the adapter. And I spent some of the game shooting with the RF lens straight on the camera. Of course, no adapter needed. And we got a whole load of shots so that I could compare some of the photos. Now, I am going to start flashing some of the images up onto the screen right here in just one second. I think, first of all, let's just do a straight comparison of two very similar photos. The first one here taken with the Canon RF lens and then the second one taken with the EF lens. I would say both good sharp images came out really well. I used both of those images in the sets of the warm-ups that I sent in for that game. No problem at all. Could you tell a bit of difference if you really started to pixel peep those images? Probably you could, but overall more than adequate. The EF lens did really, really well for me there. So from there we moved into the game action and we got some different shots, some similar type images. So these next two here, these are some action shots. This first action shot here is taken with the RF lens. Nice shot, came out really well, nice and sharp. And the second one here, slightly different image, but a similar image is taken with the EF lens. And again, sharp, in focus, decent image, really happy with that. And again, I used both of those images in the set that I submitted. So then I wanted to do a slightly more direct comparison where I took a burst of shots and I used an opportunity for a couple of free throws to do this. So this first set of images. Now, I also wanted to take the chance to test the frames per second. So I made sure I fired off a good old burst uh, as these players were taking their free throws. So here's the first player. And and you can see I've got five shots here, all in fairly sort of similar stance. Nice photos, came out real sharp, showed the image, and I've been able to use these. I didn't use all of those. I only used probably the first couple where the ball's still in the shot actually for my set, but for the purpose of the video, showing all five frames. Now if we move into the next player, I took these ones with the EF lens. And again, I've got five shots, fairly similar. So you can see, I mean, it's not a perfect frames per second test, but you can see it's a very similar set of action over the five images. There's no like key image that you miss because you were only shooting at seven, eight, nine frames per second. Nice images, perfect, sharp, clean, got the images I needed with both lenses. So where does that leave us kind of performance wise over the course of the game? Now, I, I think in summary, there's two sides to it, right? I, I would say that the EF lens with the adapter on the RF mount performed flawlessly, I genuinely could not see any problems with it at all. I didn't have any kind of autofocus issues. I didn't have any kind of sharpness issues. I didn't feel like the camera was operating slower or to lesser of a performance level because of that lens. I use the word flawless cautiously, but, but genuinely, I didn't have any issues with it at all. It was totally fine for me. The EF lens on the RF adapter, on the RF mount of the R6, totally fine, really, really pleased with it. Now, of course, in contrast to that, what I can't say is that every image coming out of that lens was absolutely as good as the RF lens. Because one thing I did establish last night is that this setup, the Canon R6, with this RF 70-200 lens, it is like a magic wand. <laughs> it is an absolute 
absolutely beautiful beautiful lens and some of the images I got from it were, were fantastic so sharp so clean so so impressed with this lens so that kind of leaves us in a situation where if I had to choose which one was better then yeah look of course no question it's the RF mount lens but did the EF lens keep up yeah it absolutely kept up it was totally fine performance really really good and so then it comes down to a couple of different things the size factor that we talked about, yeah, that, that counts. That's worth thinking about if the size or, or the weight is an important thing for you. But one of the other things that you've got to think about is going to be the price. And the reason that's important is because there is a substantial, substantial price difference between these two lenses. Now, right now on eBay, you can find some really good examples, some good condition examples of this lens for about 550, 600, maybe 700 for the top notch ones about 700 pounds that's a hell of a good price for a lens of this quality in contrast to that this rf mount lens you can pick up this lens on ebay right now used and i've gone with used because i think if we're talking used price for this it's important to make it a fair comparison just for reference the new price for this right now is about 2700 pounds but you can pick up a used version of this for about 2000 2100 pounds something like that so you are talking a difference of one and a half thousand pounds between the two so yeah the answer remains that which one is better absolutely it's this one but when it comes to one and a half thousand pounds price difference was this one producing images that were one and a half thousand pounds better than the images i got with the ef lens i would suggest no I had some really sharp, really clean images coming out of this Canon R6 with the EF lens using the adapter. Really pleased with them, used them to submit for my professional set. No problems with it at all. And I think the last thing to consider is, of course, the longevity of it. And as you move forwards into the future, of course, the RF mount lens is going to outlive the EF lens. And I don't necessarily mean in terms of how long they'll last before they break. But of course, in terms of like service, repair, parts, things like that, of course, the RF mount lens is going to be around a good bit longer than the older EF lenses. Some of the oldest EF lenses on the 70 to 200 models are already Canon can't repair those. They don't have the parts or they don't make the parts for them anymore so of course that's something to remember if you decide in between the two but when it comes down to quite simply the difference between the two yeah there's a difference yes this is better but this still produces fantastic images i'm going to put them all up at the end for you again so you can compare them directly guys that is just about it i hope you found that useful i hope you found it interesting if you did i'm going to ask you to do two things for me number one hit that like button because it helps me out loads and loads on my video hit the thumbs up because it helps me and i really really appreciate it you also might want to think about subscribing if you haven't already loads of other videos on my channel Channel and loads more to come so why don't you subscribe stick around and you can check some of those out in the meantime hope you enjoyed it thank you very much for watching and i will see you on the next video i mean man i had not directly compared these two until i picked them up to show you in the video that is crazy oh man you could bicep curl this bad boy you could literally put that lens like into one of your camera slots, you know, like in your camera bag, this one has to go sideways. You could fit that one endways in. That could be a game changer.